Hi guys and welcome to this video on investigating the association between a numerical and categorical variable part of the further math series. Really good to see you. Now this is building on this particular chapter of work and the core data module. So if you haven't already watched all of our previous videos, go on over. This is the third one in the series, having previously looked at the explanatory variable, response variables, and how to investigate associations between categorical and categorical. This all builds. Really good to see you if you haven't already done so. Can you please subscribe by clicking that little doohickey in the corner and spread the word. And if you haven't already discovered it, MathGuru.com has all of these videos linked by textbook, chapter, and has downloadable notes for you. So head on over there, absolutely free to sign up and hopefully pretty useful for you as well. Now, as I say, always look good to know what does the word associated mean? How to use parallel box plots? We're gonna look at that. Dot plot, back to back stem plots. All of these are really important, but the key is that you are going to be comparing numerical and categorical data. When I first taught this, that seemingly had gone way out of my head and I was thrown by a very, very simple VCAR question. So further maths isn't as easy as people make out. Now, we've already looked at the idea of numerical variables, categorical variables. We know what they are and there is a little bit of a recap there. Numerical values can take number values and categorical values take categories or group things into categories okay so they'll be worded type things like uh what am i trying to think colors or oh i don't know now um put myself on the spot i'm sure another one will come to mind in just a moment now in previous years you've talked about box plots and in a previous uh, course on a previous video we looked at the idea about box plots because they could put data into quartiles uh, or quarters yeah and if we have a box plot we have something along these lines where we have this point here is my lowest data item this here is my lower quartile my median my upper quartile and this point here would be my highest value okay and the difference between various points gives us various data items so the difference between the lowest and the highest gives me my range and the difference between my lower quartile and my upper quartile, if you remember, was my interquartile range. Why are all these important? Well, this, this difference here, this interquartile range, is roughly speaking where 50% of our data lies. And sometimes that's quite useful to us to know where our middle 50% of our data lies. This doesn't take account of outliers, which can also make things very interesting with box plots. So, if we look at an example extracted from the Cambridge Further Mass textbook, with permission, thank you very much, the questions to ask are, which is the categorical variable? You've got to look at this information and say, well, which is the categorical variable? Which is the numerical variable? Is there anything about the scale which might trick us? Uh, what do colored dots mean? So these type of things here. What is the explanatory variable? And which is the response variable? Which is going to be predicted from which? Yes, and which data points do we use to compare and describe? Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Looking at that graph there, which do you think is the explanatory variable? Now, interestingly, most people say, ah, oh, you said, previous video, it's always the one on the x-axis. Hmm, except for here. It is highly unlikely that for a parallel box plot that we are going to take the salary and predict people's ages. That actually doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And in this situation, I actually think that the ages here are our explanatory variables, and this would be my response variable, because the chances are I'd be looking at taking an age and trying to predict some sort of salary for them, right? More likely to do that. That's just one of those little things that sort of threw me on some of the questions recently. Now, if we look at this, we've got box plots, we've got loads of information. This here is my lowest point. So all of these red dots I'm doing at the moment are my lowest point. So could we use those to compare? Absolutely, we could use that. That's one summary statistic we could use. Here is my highest point, my highest point, my highest point, my highest point. I could use those. Do we notice some sort of an increase? Yes, we do. Do we notice an increase there? Absolutely, we do. Could What else could we use? Rubbing these out. I could use this middle line here, these medians. Do they seem to have some sort of increase being shown? Again, they could. There is so much information in a parallel box plot that can be used to compare, and it just so happens I list them here. So we can compare medians. 
What was the median? That was the ones I was just doing there, yes? And we could turn around and say, actually, let's bring that down. The parallel box plot shows the median salaries and age group are associated. So we're confirming, we're saying there's an association here because median salaries increase with age group. We are talking about salaries, age groups. We're using our explanatory variable and our response variable titles in there. We're saying what which summary statistic we're using, the median salaries. We're saying that we think there is an association, all in one sentence. And then we're giving an example. We're using some actual data. So for example, the median salary increases from, and they give a value and an age, to, and a value and an age. As I said in a previous video, make sure you are putting as much information as you can without giving them your life story, because they don't really want your life story. So that was comparing medians. We can also compare interquartile ranges and or ranges. Now, I wouldn't necessarily compare ranges. The problem with comparing ranges is outliers tend to throw these things, okay? So, and a range is very specific. You can't just ignore an outlier. What we can do is the interquartile range, because that's the middle 50% of the data, and I think it would look better at actually comparing those. So again, let's just scroll up so it's all in the thing. From the parallel box plus, we can see that the spread of salaries is associated with age group. Again, for example, the interquartile range increased from around, so again, data has been given. What was that, 12,000 to around 20,000. Now remember, our interquartile range is the gap or the middle 50%. So here, 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 and here. What do we notice? those boxes are getting longer and longer and longer. As we go up, as the ages increase, they're getting longer. So what is the last one? We can compare the shape, all right? And this is taken from a different video. The parallel blocks plots, we see that the shape of the distribution of salaries is, is associated with age group because the distribution, which is symmetric for 20 to 29 year olds, becomes progressively more positive skewed as age increases, right? So let's just go back and say, is it becoming more positive skew? Absolutely it is. Now again, a question I've got at the end of this video that has a VCAR question in actually asks you to do, uh, to work out whether there's an association and it asks you to choose the summary statistic. So it's over to you to decide which one you choose. Just use values. So that is a parallel block, uh, box plot. What about dot plots? Can we compare categorical and numerical data with dot plots? Absolutely we can. So categorical data is a number of sit-ups after gym program. And here is, that's my category. And here, ladies and gentlemen, are my numerical data items. So it says the parallel dot plots below display the distribution of the number of sit-ups performed by one 15. That's supposed to be 15 people, by the way, before and after they had completed a gym program. Do the parallel dot plots suggest? So here we go, number of sit-ups after gym program, number of sit-ups before the gym program. There are my categories. And here are my dots. So a question has been given to you in terms of the data it wishes you to compare. It says here, what does it say? Uh, write a brief explanation that compares medians. Thank you very much. The median is the middle value. All right, okay. So how do we find the middle value of a dot plot? Well, the first thing is it tells me there are 15 people. The middle data item is always take the number of data items, add one and divide by two, which gives me eight. So 16 divided by two is eight. So that's the eighth dot plot from either end. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight should be that one there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So in this situation, 32 is my median. So the number of sit-ups after a gym program was 32. Number of sit-ups before the gym program. Now remember, when we count through the dot plot, when you're going left to right, you go up the dots. And when you go right, to left, you go down the dots. Very important that you don't mess that up. Okay, so uh, still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's just check that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I met in the middle, and so that is 26. Can we see the difference? Absolutely. So there does seem to be an association between the number of sit ups before a gym program and after a gym program, when we compare the medians. Is there a report? Yes, there's a report. The median number of sit-ups performed after attending the gym program 32 is considerably higher. Oof, we've made some sort of bold statement there, considerably higher than the number of sit-ups performed before attending the gym program. This indicates that there is an association. 
So that's what was that. So we so far dealt with parallel. We've dealt with dot plots, and there's something else as well that we can use to compare com uh, categorical data and numerical data, and that is a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. Now remember, the most important for a thing for a stem and leaf plot is the key. Now that's six, line seven equals 67 years tells you how to read all of the data items. So this value here, that two, is part of that seven, so that would suggest the two was actually 72. This nine is part of that five, and so it is not 95. Lots of people think it's not 95, or it is 95, it isn't, it's 59. So try not to make mistakes here with this type of information. But absolutely, it's there to compare data. We have two categories, 1970 and 2010. Now you can say that's numerical data. Mm, no, years can be categories. Mm, whole new discussion. Mm -hmm. So the question goes and says the back-to-back -back stem plot below displays the distribution for 13 countries in 2010 and 1970. Do the back-to-back -back stem plots support the contention that life expectancy is increasing over time? Write a brief explanation based on the comparison of the two medians. So once again, let's rub out all of this stuff and let's find our medians. It told us there were 13 countries. Oh, let's not write that in highlighter. They told us there were 13 countries, add one and divide by two, which give me the seventh data item. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Remember, the way you count is really important. That way or this way. So now backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That gives me 76 for 2010. And we'll now check for 1970. Oh, we want the seventh one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And just check one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that gives me 67 for 1970. Is there a difference? Absolutely. And so by comparing our mediums, we can now say there is an association and write a concise report. Yes, the median life expectancy in 2010 is considerably higher again than the median life expectancy in 1970. This indicates that life expectancy is associated and is increasing over time. Some of these are great boilerplate code uh, sort of sentences for you to put in your summary book, if you would. Right, there is a VCAR question here that I just wanted to discuss, or a couple of VCAR questions, and at the end of each video, I hope to be able to put VCAR questions to talk about the data. The box plots below display the distribution of the maximum number of daily temperature for the months of May and June. Okay, so I have numerical data, temperature, May and June, categorical data, I like the box plots. Using the information from the box plots, explain why the maximum daily temperature is associated with the month of the year and quote values. Again, you can use any appropriate statistic. It said use any appropriate statistic. In many cases, I would probably always use the median. It's nice, it's simple, it's one that probably the examiners are looking for. And so what we can say is uh, there is an association between the month of the year and the temperature because, and put some summary statistics in there. I'm not gonna write that for you, I just wanted to talk about the question. This is the one that absolutely tricked me and I was so annoyed about this when I actually got it. Parallel box plots would be an appropriate graphical tool to investigate the association between monthly median rainfall in millimeters. So that's trying to tell me that that's my numerical data and that. And it was at this point that I was like, parallel box plots, wow. I'm looking for categorical data now. All right, so whatever response I'm looking for here has to be categorical data because that's the best thing that a parallel box plot is used for. Okay, monthly median wind speed, no kilometers per hour, no median wind speed would be numerical, it can't be A. Median temperature can't be B. Month of the year, hold on a moment, that's categorical. Monthly sunshine hours, that's a number. Annual rainfall is a number, and lo and behold, C has to be my correct answer. And I cannot tell you how annoyed I was when that, well, when I couldn't do that answer. But now, hopefully you've learned from my experience. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this lesson. Key takeaway, make sure you understand the three different types of graphs that you can use for comparing uh, numerical and categorical variables. The next uh, lesson that comes up is going to be numerical and numerical, and hopefully I'll see you for that one there, because this is now over. Thank you very much if you have 
enjoyed this lesson leave a comment below if you haven't already done so there is a doohickey over there for you to click and subscribe spread the word to your mates otherwise i look forward to seeing you in the next video it's been good spending some time with you take care have a good day see you soon Bye bye